Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today we are going to continue on the journey of vintage test equipment. And as you can see from the label right here, I have an ultrasound watt meter. Now this is almost the exact ultrasound watt meter that I trained on 20 years ago. And it was an old vintage piece of equipment at that time. So I have no idea how old this is. Maybe we can find out when I open it up because you know that is exactly what we're gonna do. So guys, this comes in a very heavy duty laminated case. There is a mount over here for a ultrasound arm, and then you put the probe in it. So go ahead and open it up so I can show you. Here I have a reservoir, and the reservoir is filled with liquid, and in the bottom of the reservoir is a cone. And that cone uh, transfers out the ultrasound energy and actually measures kind of like on a scale the amount of force pushing down on it and the more watts the more force pushing down on the cone and that's how it gets its readout so uh, this is a beautiful example by the way it looks absolutely perfect it says uh, over here uh, one antifreeze two water so apparently there's antifreeze in the water inside the the thingamabob right here which we'll check that out um when i click power on it doesn't want to power on and it takes uh i believe nine volt batteries in the back there are instructions under the lid take a look at that very cool i love it um what else can i say about it i have a zero knob right here so that adjusts the gain on the scale so that it zeroes out the scale. It's technically a scale. I'm gonna call it a scale, but it's technically a scale. So guys, we're gonna go ahead and take it apart. I don't see the arm here, the arm that holds the, there should be like three fingers or so that mount on this guy, and it holds the ultrasonic uh, therapy probe to measure the output, and I don't see it here. So that means that it's just a component that's missing. I could make another one, doesn't, doesn't really matter. All you have to do is make sure that you hold the ultrasound probe nice and stable. Now, ultrasonic therapy, it's uh, like a version of microwave. And what it does is it vibrates the tissue and vibrating tissue, it warms the tissue internally. Kind of like a microwave warms your food internally. Uh, only microwaves use RF energy that is harmonically tuned to the exact same frequency as water molecules by vibrating at the same uh, resonant frequency as the water molecules. If you send a certain frequency of electromagnetic radiation into something, whatever is you know relevant to that is going to also try and vibrate at the same frequency. And just you know, water molecules based on their size and their chemical structure, it has a very specific resonant frequency. Now this operates kind of at the same principle, uh, ultrasound therapy. I have a couple videos on it, um, but this is the watt meter that you would use to measure the output from those devices because the last thing that you wanna do is overexpose your patients. So in physical therapy, the ultrasound therapy system is probably um, the most potentially harmful. Okay, all right, let's see, how am I gonna do this? Um, so the reason that I can't power this up and the reason I can't fix it at the moment, you can see my nine volt batteries on the backside, they're kind of falling in on themselves. It's just a panel that's glued and not glued very well. So I, I have to open it up regardless just to fix it. And that means that we can get inside and take this guy apart. There we go, that's it. Uh, what is that? What is that? That's weird. The reason that I'm weirded out is because on the bottom of this chamber, there is a hole and you can see that there's some sort of weight or a spacer that is built into the bottom of this case. And it's, it looks like it's got the perfect diameter to fill this hole. I have no clue 
what that is. If it's like a vent or something like that for thermal expansion. I don't know. Here, let's carefully put this down. Take a look inside the box. It's a very nicely built box. I actually have nails in the corner braces and we have threaded brass inserts as well. Uh, very nice box. You definitely don't see them like that anymore. Okay, so I have uh, two 9 volt battery modules here and obviously those batteries are probably, probably old. <laughs> it says used before March 21st or March 2021. So I am going to kick these guys out. And hold on just one second, guys. So one of the things I can tell you is that we are slowly migrating away from 9-volt batteries, but there still are a bunch of devices, mainly test equipment and thermometers and some other things like that, uh, that use 9-volt batteries. And these right here, the 9-volt interface cable or the 9-volt the, uh, plug, those you can buy just the cable with the with the insulated uh, adapter on Amazon, a pack of 10 or 20 and for like two or three bucks. They're really cheap. And I highly recommend that every biomed shop just buy some and keep some. I mean, there's little temperature monitors and stuff that use these, but every once in a while you will get a nine volt battery that does not want to separate from one of these very easily and it will rip one of these pads off because all they are is they're riveted through like a piece of cardboard so if that cardboard ever gets wet or anything and you try and disconnect the battery it's going to destroy this connector so if you don't have any of those connectors i highly recommend you all get some i believe i have some right here I, matter of fact i know i do i've got a bunch of them because i do with a lot of different types of equipment um so that is my two nine volts now what i'm curious about is how are those nine volts wired in? Are they two separate nine volt circuits or are they going to run in series to make an 18 volt system? Hmm, not really sure. I can't really tell because there's a uh, zip tie right there. Uh, it has a very large processor on here, kind of like the original 80, 80, 8086. Um, I don't know what this is. It's ICL 7106 CPL. I'll have to look that guy up and see what it is. And let's see, right here is my zeroing potentiometer. And you can see that I have a load cell in there. And just like I said, just like a scale, um, there is a load cell in there. And it is going to press down on it with just wave energy. And that's how that forms. Uh, a reading pretty cool stuff man so it, it clearly has some sort of ethylene glycol or antifreeze in the, the chamber right here they do that because a it doesn't grow bacterial growth and and B um, it doesn't corrode it's it's a corrosion inhibitor so two good reasons to use it there but uh, I believe this pool at the top is what you would fill with water so uh, your transducer is gonna sit in a little pool of water right here at the top. So it's gonna come in at a 90 degree angle and it's gonna sit in a pool of water and that water is gonna transfer energy into the ultrasonic gel. But I'm, I'm pretty sure the, the, the antifreeze down below is not supposed to have this bubble of air. I'm pretty sure all the air is supposed to be removed and that means that this guy is leaking a little bit. Um, you can't have air in an ultrasonic therapy system because air uh, compresses and anything that can compress will lose uh, energy. And if you're measuring energy, the very last thing you want to do is lose energy. So uh, with that giant air pocket at the top of the bubble there, there's no way that this guy's going to give an accurate reading um, because the, the probe is just going to disperse all the energy into air and you get a fraction of the wattage that you're actually outputting. So that means that this whole chamber would have to be bled. And I would assume that you'd have to invert it like this, probably uh, loosen up all these fasteners around the perimeter, break the seal, and maybe replace the, the uh, all the liquid. That's what I would assume. 
Very curious because that porthole in the bottom could also be a fill port. Now I'm really curious. Really curious. I love it. Okay, so I have a, um, over here I probably have a analog to digital converter because your analog is going to be your uh, load cell and you're gonna convert that over to a digital signal which then has to be quantified to wattage. And you can see here on the back, there are three potentiometers for adjustment and it looks like all three of them have been tweaked in their life cycle. So that means that this guy here, you know, once you get all the air out of it, then you would go through and do your, your gain adjustments down here for this guy. Fascinating, love it, love it. Okay guys, well that would be an ultrasonic, uh, it's an ultrasonic watt meter. And uh, this model here is a UW3. And uh, it was made by the Bulls Corporation, but I do believe it was made by Biotech. You know, the infamous Biotech guys. In fact, it does say Biotech inside it. Um, how cool is that? I, I had no idea. So Bulls, um, I've never heard of that company, but hey, you learn something new every day, right guys? Anyway, that, uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. I'm learning new stuff. I love it, new stuff. This guy right here is the fill port. All right, guys, somebody's probably screaming in the comments. No, Justin, that's not it. Um, when I was talking about removing the bottom. So it looks like you can service everything through this guy here. I don't see any clear leaks around the base. In fact, here on my silicone mat, I'm not seeing any signs of water droplets. So what you would do is probably with a syringe, this is also tapered a little bit, that's kind of cool. With a syringe, you would fill this guy up and then bleed the air out like this. So press down on it, you know, squirt some more in and then, you know, do that process to get all the air out of that chamber. Way easier than what I was thinking, but nonetheless, um, yeah, I'll probably drain it out and, and fill it up and then glue this guy back in, which you can see it has a couple fastener holes on it. Probably screw it into the box instead of gluing it in. The glue gets old, you know, disconnects. It is what it is, guys. Anyway, hope you like this video. I have a whole entire stack of vintage test equipment right over here that I'm gonna be running through over the next couple weeks, guys. We're gonna be taking stuff apart, checking stuff out. How cool is this to see vintage technology? And the fact of the matter is, is if I service this just a little bit, this is still a perfectly usable watt meter because form function, all watt meters that I've used recently, they have the same function, just maybe an exposed cone. So um, this guy here could still be used. Very cool. All right, guys. I've taken enough of your time. Thanks for watching, guys.